Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials and today I want to share with you a fun new app I just discovered on my computer, the Windows 10 Weather app. If you have Windows 10 on your computer, you've probably got this installed on it as well. So let's get started. As you can see, I've got the Weather app open on my desktop right now, but I'm going to go ahead and close it so I can show you three different ways to open it. Ah, how do you like my desktop background? That's a shot I took out in Nevada, Arizona, Utah, a trip we just took a few weeks ago. Really nice, isn't it? Okay, here we go. One of the first ways to start it is just to click on your start box and type in WEA and look, it appears in the box. Weather, just hit enter and boom, there it goes. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, let's close it again. We're going to click on the start button, click on one of the letters to bring up the alphabet, click on the W because that's what it starts with. There's weather, click on that and boom, there it starts. Now there's another way we can do it. I want to show you how to create a desktop shortcut. And if you don't like the desktop shortcut, make that into a keyboard shortcut. So here we go. I'm going to click on the start button. I'm going to click on the letter. I'm going to click on W and I'm going to take the weather and I'm going to drag it to my desktop. Notice a little icon in the lower left hand corner of the icon. That means it's a shortcut. Now, if we right click on this shortcut, we go down to the bottom, we select properties. We notice here is a field for shortcut key. Now, before I do that, I want to test my shortcut key. So I'm going to click out of the properties box to deselect it. I want to do control shift W. Now, if control shift W works for anything else, uh, I want to know it. So I'm going to click here in the desktop where there's nothing and I'm going to press control shift W and nothing happens. Okay, that works. So we say shortcut key. I've clicked in that field. I press control shift W and notice it shows up there in the field. Now I'm going to click OK and that's all there is to it. I'm going to click here on the empty desktop to make sure nothing is selected and press control shift W and boom it opens so now anytime i want to open my weather app all i have to do is press Control shift w when you very first start your weather app you're going to be presented with a screen that shows all your settings i've already set my settings so i can't show you that initial screen but they are essentially the same settings as you have look in the lower left hand corner of the window and that gear icon is settings so the settings that you will get when you very first start the app and you can change them on that settings button are the mode, the light, the dark, or the windows default. I've tried the light and the dark. I really can't tell any difference, so I'm not going to worry about that. Showing the temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius and looking at your launch location. I usually am going to have always detect my location because when I'm traveling, I want it to figure out where I am. But right now I've got my default location set to Tulsa, Oklahoma, because I have family that lives there and I like to see what their weather is. When you open the weather app, it usually goes to the forecast, which is the same thing as this button in the upper left hand corner of the menu. Notice when I hover over the button, the little tool tip comes up that says forecast. When I click on it, it takes me to my default location, which in this case is Tulsa, Oklahoma. In the forecast, we have several items you need to look at. First, let's look at the screen itself. We have the daily forecast, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., etc., etc. And we have the hourly forecast. You can see where the temperature is probably going to go. They're pretty cold in Tulsa today. And you can see if they have precipitation. It looks like they've got cloudy. They've got partly sunny. And then the moon comes out and then the clouds come back. And then tomorrow at 7 a.m., it's going to be sunny. We also have the details of today. We've got the day, what time, the sunrise, sunset, the moonrise, moonset, precipitation, humidity, UV, max, wind, and the moon phase, and a few other things that you can just explore on your own. Let me call your attention now to the very top bar on this forecast setting. We've got the refresh menu right here. This refreshes the forecast. We've got the favorites. You can pin it to your favorites menu or remove it. Here's a pin icon, and I don't know exactly what that means. I haven't tried it, and I don't think I really want to. You can also change your dark theme. See the difference? I really can't tell much of it except for the left-hand sidebar. So I'm just going to leave it on the light theme. And you've got more, which does nothing more than give you the text indications of what those icons mean. You can also search. 
you click in here and you can search for, oh, let's do Bangor, Maine, United States. And look at here, there's a temperature in Bangor, Maine, 11 degrees. Ooh, that's nice and cold. All right, let's just go back to our previous forecast, which was Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now let's go over here to the left-hand menu. Right up at the very top, you got a hamburger icon. And just like the More button on the top-line menu, this hamburger icon does nothing more than give you the text versions of the icons that you have. Go over them real quick. Forecasts we've already seen. You can do maps. You can do historical weather. You can look at your favorites. You can look at news. You can send them feedback. You can get on Microsoft News right here in the weather app. You can sign out and you can do the settings. Let's go to the next item on this menu, the maps. I really like this one. Notice it comes up first on radar observation here in the top line menu, and we're looking at Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you look down in the very bottom menu here, and you should always look in the bottom bar, you see it's giving you some time between, in this case, 7.30 and 9.20 a.m., and it's showing you what has shown up on the weather in that time frame. Also on the bottom line menu, it gives you your time where the playhead is on the radar and the day of it. On the very far right hand side here on the radar observation map, it shows you what the various colors mean. Now we can see here there may be some very light rain in Colorado and New Mexico and over here in Tennessee and maybe Georgia. You can also zoom out on this menu, click, click, and it zooms way out. You can also zoom in with a click, click, click. You can also zoom in and out by holding down the control key on your keyboard and using the wheel on your mouse to zoom out and to zoom in. That's an interesting thing to do. Let's look at some of the other maps that we have here. We have the temperature map. And again, this shows you the temperature. Let's go ahead and zoom out so we can see more of the United States. There it is. Let's look at the radar observation and zoom out. There we can see the entire USA. Now let's go back to the temperature map and we can see what the temperature is over the United States. And you can see it's also a tracking temperature with a timeline down on the bottom. And in the lower right hand corner, it gives you a key of what the various colors mean for temperature in the USA. And you can see here up in the Northwest in the Rocky Mountains, we've got some nice low temperatures and negatives. And if we look at the minus five degree, we can see we have some of that up here in the Northeast. And we don't really have any nice warm temperatures here on January 14th. But if you get down in New Mexico, it's getting to 70 degrees and above. So we can see the temperature and the forecast. Let's look at the radar forecast map. Now this is from the current time up to sometime in the future, maybe an hour. And this is their forecasting we can see here off the coast of California. We've got some storms moving in, it looks like. Some pretty heavy rain. And it's just an interesting thing to see. We also have a precipitation map. And again, it is a forecast from 10 a.m. Currently it's 9.30. So they're forecasting precipitation from 10 a.m. to uh, looks like 10 a.m. Okay, uh, whatever works. We can stop the forecast map by just clicking on the play button, and we can see what precipitation colors mean here. And again, we can see there's forecast precipitation in California and some down in Mexico. If we click the play button again, we can see that it's moving mostly to the northwest. Some precipitation off the coast here. One of my favorite maps here is the satellite map. We can see the map of the information from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and see what all the cloud cover is. And we can see from satellite what the precipitation moving into California looks like. And we've got some, looks like heavy clouds, but we saw there was no rain off the coast in the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. And the final map is the cloud cover. So if you're into flying, this is an excellent map to be able to look at. Okay, those are the maps on the weather app. Let's go to the historical weather. Now, we're still in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, we can see the historical weather for January through December. I think it picks whatever month you're in, and it gives you a year in advance. And we can see the temperatures. We're on the temperature right now here in the upper right-hand segment. It shows where the temperature, and you can see that the temperature range goes up in the summertime and down in the wintertime, and that's pretty cool. And down here, it gives you 
for January, your average high, your average low, record high, record low, and the average rainfall for that month. If we click on a different month, for example, March, there we have March, and it gives you the same information for that. You can click on any month that you like, or you can use the drop down here to select the month that you wish. If you want something other than temperature, say you want to look at the rainfall, here's the rainfall that you get throughout the year. Notice the information in the bottom half doesn't change, but you do see the average rainfall, and you can see the number of snow days for any particular month. And of course, January has the record number of snow days, which is, hmm, looks like six snow days in January in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's a very interesting thing to be able to look at when you want to. Now let's look at the next item on our menu on the left hand side, which is our favorites. Okay, we're going to click on that and you can see what cities I have added to my favorites right here. And you just pick on one of those, say for example, Cullahee, North Carolina, little town, and you get the forecast again. And again, you can go to all of these other information areas, for example, historical. And here we are at Cullahee, North Carolina, and you can see the temperature and you can see the rainfall and you can see they have a few snow days in Cullahee, North Carolina as well. Okay, the next item is you can look at news and this is basically weather news and it brings it up from the internet. Winter storm drops one more round of snow on the DC area and you scroll down through here and you can see a whole bunch of news items that all you got to do is click on them and you will see the news for the weather for that particular item that you clicked on. You can give them feedback by clicking on that icon. You can look at the Microsoft News by clicking on that icon and you can sign out there. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. Instead of signing out, you can just click on that. So there you have it, the weather app on Windows 10. I hope you got some good information from this tutorial and that you enjoy using your web app. As always, give us a big old thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to click on that subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified whenever we post another great tutorial here on David's Tutorials.